Okay, time for Layla Central's layout update. G'day guys and welcome back to Layla Central. My name's Clinton, your average modeler, and this uh, video is a layout update on what's been happening here at Layla Central. Now, since my last uh, monthly update uh, on the channel here, I've had quite a few new subscribers join me. So a big warm welcome to you guys. Um, you know, feel free to always comment uh, down below. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you like. Uh, <clears throat> and don't uh, hesitate, you know, to speak to your friends about if you reckon uh, they should join and follow the progress as well. And, uh, and of course, if you're checking out the channel and this video for the first time, don't hit, uh, forget to hit that subscribe button so you can follow my progress as well. Now, taking a look at uh, the schedule on where I'm at and what's actually been done. Now, I have also encountered a few uh, potential issues in the last month with my track work, which uh, I've included a couple of videos right here. So as you can see, I had a couple of issues uh, relating to the track work. Now, what I'll do is I'll give you my explanation and show you what the cause of that was. Okay, so obviously one of the first videos that you saw there was in regards to this section around here where I've got a single slip and a double slip sitting way over here. Now, depending whether it was over here or on this slip, I was having a couple of track issues. Now, this area of all this track work was not an issue at all. It, uh, I had a good thorough look and found out the problem was having it happening elsewhere in the layout, back further around. So after a bit of investigation, uh, and essentially a good bit of time later, I finally found out what was causing the issue. Um, and the only thing was though, when the tr uh, whether it be the, uh, the wagons got to this section here, that's when then it highlighted the problem. Now, funny enough though, coaches like those that you've seen uh, go through did not have any issues. But any small wheelbase wagons did, and I'll explain to you where and why that was. Okay, so this part of the layout here uh, should be familiar. We're in between Brinklow and Shilton, so for, just to get your bearings, this is going to be uh, Shilton right here. Then we've got our curve going around here, and then it goes right around to what will be Brinklow. So the issue where my track was having was right here along these bends here. Now, for those that may remember uh, from some of my earlier videos, I had put in some super elevation. Now to do that, I was using these little popsicle sticks, um, which were doing the job quite well. Uh, as mentioned, you know, I did plenty of trials uh, with carriages, had no problems at all. They were going through it, not a problem. Uh, the trains, everything was working quite fine and well, until I started to get these sorts of small uh, wheelbase uh, items in. Now, what was interesting, short trains, short length trains were okay, but as soon as it started to go to the length like what's just run through there, then I was having derails. Now, what was actually occurring was, or the cause, was my super elevation, these bits of uh, popsicle stick that I've actually used. So, what was happening, okay, this bit of the track was elevated, uh, or used to be elevated, then I removed it out, started about here so it would lean into the actual bend itself so my hands out of the way so it would lean into the bend and curl around right here now when it got to that part there where it was in the transition between it being flat and then it coming onto that incline it was lifting these wagons up now i've got this little dapper wagon here just to try and uh, show you what i actually mean so let's put the camera down a bit uh, closer level here just one sec guys sorry so pretend at the moment 
Now this is going to exaggerate things a bit more, but it will illustrate what my problem was. Obviously when the train's running along, the wagon's on all four wheels there, no problems, it works fine. As soon as it actually hit that increment, it was lifting the two wheels up. So only this wheel here and the other opposite wheel being over here was in contact with the track. It would lift this one up and would lift this back one up over here to the point where I'd have this bit of wonkiness actually going on. Um, so it was too steep uh, an incline, if that makes sense, uh, right here. Now, that was then dislodging them and then pulling that train over. So I'd have this wheel off the track but it wouldn't be noticed until it went round further to where the slips were um, or any turnouts and that's when that was causing the problem. Now I did plenty of tests, I did plenty of trials, I removed the popsicle, whoops, I removed the popsicle sticks, I tried other thin items, I tried a various amount of stuff. Now unfortunately I could not get my super elevation to work with my long length of wagons uh, which is what my main goal was. Um, short trains with freight was not a problem whatsoever. It was as soon as I actually went a long length of train with wagons, short wheelbases, then it was derailing, it was having problems. And it was occurring a lot in this area here. It was occurring a little bit further after uh, Brinklow as well. Um, not as often as what it would here, but um, you know, I spent about three hours trying to adjust the super elevation to the point where I gave up. So I've actually taken my super elevation out, out of here. I've taken it out over the other, all the other areas as well. Um, and I've bit the bullet. There's going to be no super elevation. I'm a bit bummed. Um, and I tried a few, like I mentioned, I've tried various things. I tried uh, layers of paper. I tried smaller, thinner pieces of uh, timber as well. Um, to oh, all manner of things, including some round plastic card strips. Um, but I was still having problems. And like I mentioned. The coaches, any of the trains themselves had no issues, so locomotives, any of the coaches had no problems, but as soon as there were these little wagons involved, didn't matter if they were Hornby, if they were Buckman, if they were Dapal or Oxford Rail, they were having issues and derailing. Um, so as a result, I've just pulled them out, and as soon as I've got rid of the super elevation, the track is impeccable. I'm not having any trains derailing. Um, so... <laughs> To be honest, reliable having trains not derail to me is far more <laughs> desirable than some super elevations. So in the end, that was uh, one of the things that I had to do. Okay, so taking that into account, um, you know, all that's been fixed and the track is running quite well now. And as you can hear by the trains running, I mean, I'm giving them a thorough good run through all the different track uh, and they're not having an issue whatsoever, which is great. Um, and of course, we'll wait and see. Now, my luck is Murphy's Law, something will derail on camera. But <laughs> if it does, I'll put it on camera anyway. But so far, so good. So looking at uh, May, if we have a look here, for example, my goal was to lay the industry track work and the mainline loop, the inner loop, which is what this uh, mainline train here is running. So um, there are two, well, three main lines, if you want to call it that. These two main lines here are the express up and the express down. This one out here is essentially the slow goods line um, up. So when you take a look at, for example, up here at Shilton now, again, excuse the mess, it's, uh, my layout is quite messy. It's probably going to be that way for a long time. Um, so, you know, we've got our two main lines here. This is the express up. That's the express down. This loop out here of uh, Shilton, for example, is the slow goods down. So if there was a goods train running on the main line, it could deviate off and allow an express to come through. Uh, with no problems, and uh, and this line out here is the slow goods line, pretty much. Hence why I have uh, the these two trains going in the one direction. They're supposed to be like that, um, and eventually, once I get this line worked up and going, but uh, so the main line in a loop. This one here is up and going, uh, which is great. Um, as you've seen with some of my previous videos with the testing, it all seems to be working quite well. And uh, but anyway, let's have a quick look at the industry track work. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so here we are over at the industry, uh, the uh, cement plaque and uh, all the track is in with the exception obviously down here where there's going to be the, uh, the shunter's yard or shed right here. Um, so as mentioned previously in some of my videos, haven't really decided on where it's going to be an open shed or a brick sort of building. Um, that's all up in the air at the moment. I'm not going to put the track work in until I figure out what building's going here. So at least when I put the track in, it's going to be perfect to fit the building that's going to be there. I may scratch build something for it, um, but we'll wait and see. But otherwise, um, you know, for those that haven't actually watched my last video uh, where I laid my track for this, it is all in. I have tested it extensively and it's working quite well my branch line just over further um, you know, as mentioned on my last monthly video I had a uh, person comment uh, one of my subscribers now initially the plan was this was going to be just a single line coming through here um, but one he made a great suggestion and actually said you know a push-pull service would look fantastic here um, and uh, I, I thought it was a fantastic idea plus also a good excuse to get some certain locomotives and coaches um, so I've put in essentially a passing loop so I can have a push-pull service I can also get uh, my cement trains to run through um, and who knows it might end up being where you know some of the cement wagons are stored here as well as other shunting goes on down over in the cement plant but uh, but otherwise it's all testing well it's all looking good and uh, I've got no problems at this stage with it now I had done my last video I had uh, a subscriber actually comment and ask me what sort of underlay I was using now all around my main layout, so around the actual outer lines, etc. I've gone with the Woodland Scenics track underlay, as I've mentioned once before. So here's just an example of it. This is a, a half piece of it. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it's quite good. It's it's nice and dense. has a little bit of a beveled edge, as you can sort of see there, uh, which allows, you know, a good tapering off of the ballast. Now, when it comes to this branch line here as well, I wanted to make it a bit different uh, to highlight its age or just give it that bit of characteristic so it's not all the same. So I've actually gone with a different brand. Now, for those that are interested, I've used this new one called TrackRite. Now, this is made uh, in Australia, um, and I thought I'll give it a crack and see how it goes. Now, this uh, they make them on different profiles, as you can see here, where you've got the double edges, and they've got a little bit of a sunken bit. You've got uh, you know different profiles to different needs that you actually want. Um, so what I did was I grabbed this one here, so my track is slightly lower than the rest of it on the main plane. And um, again, here it is here. Um, it seems to be quite interesting. It seems to be more rubber involved. Um, and uh, like I mentioned, you know, it's got that indentation there for the track to nestle right in there. Uh, still has the bevel edges. And, uh, and look, it works good. Uh, I think I'm more prone and more of a fan of the Woodland Scenics underlay. But hey, you know, I'll give the, uh, the locals a bit of a go and see how they go. And, um, and you know what, it's, uh, it's not too bad um, in that regard. So... Okay, so over where the branch line joins the main lines, this is what I was talking about. So these three main lines here have all got the Woodland Scenics track underlay, and this is the other track right that I've actually used here. So as you can tell, I've uh, made a bit more of a gap in between the main lines here to uh, separate it, make that point of difference. And the other thing is also if we actually lower this down a little bit too, now I don't know if I'm going to get this on camera properly just yet. The tracks are not a big difference, but are slightly lower then the main lines as well. See, so I can't get my tripod low enough, but you can sort of see there is a bit of a difference in height as well. Uh, just to give that, again, that point of difference like you see out in the real world. And um, so there we go. Now, one of the other questions I had from one of my uh, subscribers was in relation to my track work. They noticed I was using a hand electric drill to drill in through my sleepers into my baseboard and then using a particular tack, which is a bit of a nail. Or not a nail, a track pin. So for those that are interested, this is what I'm using now. I'll try and get it in. Now this is essentially just a track pin uh, that I'm using to hold my track in place. Now the uh, the diameter of this is less than one millimeter. Um, it is very close. And uh, now if I zoom in a bit more closer here, I'll drop the camera. So I'll just position this around so then I can uh, bring it in. Uh, when you take a closer look, uh, actually I'll go over here. This will be a bit more easy to focus on. There it is right there, right there. So there's a track pin right there. Nice size, you know, in between the actual sleeper itself. And once I've painted this, you know, still you might notice it, but it won't be as noticeable. Um, and that's all I do. I don't glue my track to my, uh, my track bed. Um, I just essentially hold it in place with track pins and they work fantastic. I've never had any issues. Um, I push them in by hand. I don't nail them in either. 
And um, so all I do is just drill a small hole, a pilot hole for this to go through. Um, also into the baseboard a little bit and then push this in and it does form a very tight uh, connection in there. Um, you know, not as big as truck nails, um, but I never needed to do anything more. And the beauty of it is then if I wish to actually lift this truck up, I can and all I've got is some pilot holes. Big deal. Um, you know, that way I can reuse the truck if I make an error and I need to lift it, I can without damaging it. Um, you know, it gives me that versatile work, uh, look and it does work extremely well. Um, and of course, the other thing to bear in mind is since I put my track in, I do have some gaps in my sleeper such as uh, this here. And that's because I've got my feeders here now. You, as you can tell, you can't really see my feeders and that's because I've soldered them underneath. So if we go down here, then you'll start to see them a little bit. Even still, you're struggling to see them. But uh, there you go. You can sort of see two holes sitting right here and just a small wire poking up. So very well hidden. And, uh, you know, eventually I'll go through with all my sleepers cut them and uh, fit them back in here uh, and then uh, ready to go. So prior to uh, painting, obviously I'll fix all my sleepers up. So any of the gaps that you see in the uh, track work, particularly around the cement plant and the main line, um, yeah, still yet to add the sleepers back in. So as you can see around uh, in some of these areas, so around like the, uh, the turnouts themselves, uh, as well as other parts of the lines, yeah, just to try and hide, um, so we can zoom in a bit here and yeah, so around those parts there, put the sleepers in, tidy them up, which will happen in due course. So again, just looking here at the cement plant, um, you know, it's going to be uh, quite a good operational thing, I reckon. I mean, it's going to be great seeing the uh, cement wagons coming in from over yonder, curling around and then coming through here. Um, you know, having some shunting going on. Now, in relation to shunting, um, obviously I need some shunters. Now, during the time period uh, that I'm actually modelling this, so around the late VR, uh, era where diesels and steam were transitioning over um, gives me a good excuse to have you know a couple of different shunters now I'm a big fan of the packets um, which sort I don't know um, but at some point I'm probably going to get a packet to uh, do the shunting around these areas but also a diesel uh, little shunter as well would be ideal uh, that way I'm getting the best of both worlds um, but at this stage as you can imagine I mean I've got this nice big cement plant in progress but I've got you know I don't have an appropriate train to bring stock in here i don't even have the appropriate wagons yet um and that includes you know the goods vans uh versus you know even the uh, the cement uh wagons uh whether they're the pres flows for example to other tankers um so it's going to be i don't know a little bit of a while until i actually get some appropriate rolling stock for this area um so uh bear in mind i'm going to try my best to get some but um obviously due to budget and uh time and life as well um you know I'll get them as soon as I can, but I can't, won't be able to get them just tomorrow either. But uh, I think the weight will be well worth it. And, uh, and for those that are interested, uh, the cement wagons I'm going to go for this here. Now, I was looking at Prez Flows. However, working off the price of, say, um, the, uh, the Buckman versions uh, to even, you know, looking at the Dapo uh, Prez Flows and everything else, I've decided I'm not going to go. The Prez Flows, I'm actually going to go the Acura scale. Uh, wagons now I think they're the Chemflow wagons I can't think of the proper name for them but um, look very very nice uh, wagons and you know for the price and what you're getting I reckon they're incredibly great value for money for the detail and I think a good set of them in this area here uh, being shunted is going to look the part so um, I'm going to make the decision I will get some Acura scale uh, cement wagons and um, they're going to look right at home in this area Okay, so taking that into account, so obviously looking at May, the industry track work has now been put in, the mainline loop, uh, inner loop has been put in, so we can cross that off, we're now on track now. Taking a look at June, for example, so this month, so uh, painting the, the concrete silos, I have done a video on that, um, that was done I think in May, uh, by memory, now that uh, those concrete silos will get some further treatment as well as time goes on, um, all I've done is just the base coat of that uh, concrete look, uh, but I do plan to add a few extra elements to it. Um, but I'm not at that stage where I want to add those elements just yet. Um, as it's going to be uh, dependent on a lot of things, including the rolling stock uh, that I'm getting, which are going to affect it. So I need to hold off on those until I get some other items. Um, now, at the moment, that may not make uh, too much sense. But, uh, you know, when the time actually happens, you'll understand uh, when that happens. So 
Now, obviously, uh, painting uh, the rest of the cement plant, that will happen this month. I don't see why it won't. Um, still using the same techniques as I've used previously, uh, which I'll mention. Okay, so looking here at the cement plant buildings, uh, as you can see, I've still got this main building to paint. I've also got uh, the concrete shed here to paint, plus I do have this other little uh, bit of steel structure here, as well as the conveyors, uh, as well as the uh, the kiln and everything else. So that's the plan to get the rest of those painted. Now, some of this uh, stuff is already going to be painted uh, like some of the other buildings that you see here. So such as this building here, that's this one here is going to be painted exactly the same. This here is going to be painted the same as the walls over here. Um, in regards to this here, um, I'm probably going to use a combination of two things. One, I might be using the concrete uh, method that I've highlighted before for the sides, but use the painted method for this roof on the actual top there to tie it all in. But um, we'll have to wait and see. I've still got to also paint the, uh, the conveyors that go in between them, such as these things here. Um, now, they should be painted roughly the same as uh, the steel structure as well. Again, whether I actually decide on them being the same as the walls or the roof, not too sure, but uh, it'll be one of those just to tie it all in together. Uh, then of course, I've got the kiln to paint, which I'm a little bit unsure what to do there. A lot of them do have like a coppery red sort of look to it. Um, so I might do that, I'm a bit not too sure, but um, if I do something different, I'll chuck a video up anyway, just to share to people if they're interested with how I've painted it. Um, and then of course I do have the, uh, the smokestack to paint, which I'll just do in the regular concrete colours. So, so this month the plan is to get all of this painted and then done, uh, so then I can move on to more fun and enjoyable things, such as scenery. So there we go, so that uh, that part there will be uh, quite good once it's all painted and done. Um, now, when we take a look at, uh, for example, uh, into July here, I've got these pa uh, paint cement plant details and track painting uh, and track point writing. So what that essentially is, is I've got some extra details to enhance the cement plant uh, because I feel the cement plant lacks a lot of detail, it lacks a lot of extra bits and pieces and infrastructure. Um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do for that. Okay, so now we're back at the cement plant again now. You know, looking at the buildings here, okay, you've got your conveyors, you've got a few bits and pieces, but, you know, it lacks pipes. There's no pipes, there's no gantries, there's no uh, tanks, there's no compressors, there's... <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know, it lacks a lot of extra little detail, so it's screaming for more stuff. Um, you know, when I look at prototypical pictures, you know, there's plenty of things, whether they be like uh, gantries walking across here to pipes running across, whether it be going from this building to this one or vice versa. Uh, all various bits of infrastructure, you know, down and amongst here, there might be some tanks sitting out here with some compressors that are leaking moisture um, or condensation because they're refrigerating. I don't know what that would be, but, you know, th there's a lot of potential out here for some stuff to be created um, to enhance the details around here. So... Um, so when I talk about, you know, painting cement plant details, it's those extra little bits that I'm going to get uh, to really try and enhance this a bit more and create more visual interest. So while this does look quite good, I think it's screaming out for more details. So watch this space as I get more things, um, you know, as I go through my monthly mailbox, uh, what I actually get, I'll uh, share with you guys soon and you can see what I'm up to in that regards. Now, as I've moved the camera around to this other area here, so the other thing to occur next month is the track painting. So all the track here in the industry uh, that you see, so the rails, the actual sleepers, uh, everything here is going to get painted um, in a different sort of colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the paintwork from probably around here somewhere and continue right around and get all of this done uh, in one big hit. So I'll uh, do a video on that and share it with you guys on how I go about painting it. Um, and we'll see how it actually turns out. And of course, the other thing I want to add is point writing. So obviously the turnouts for the shunters uh, versus all these other bits of the line here, as well as the branch line uh, run around loop over further, 
plus you know all the other work uh, in amongst here I'm going to add some point work so um, I'm going to take a look at uh, obviously the wheels point rotting um, I'm going to take a look and see whether they're just going to be ground lever uh, frames uh, or whether they should be you know controlled by a small signal box somewhere around um, just for the uh, you know one of the guys to jump in and start switching things um, or whether it's something that you know for him to switch the the turnouts the driver has to get off or his work colleague and keep changing the turnouts each time um, but we'll wait and see so there might be some ground uh, throw um, uh, modeled uh, levers uh, from wheels or they might be uh, a signal box I might use in the area so we'll wait and see I'm not uh, not 100 percent sure I might uh, over further uh, with the actual one around loop here because we do have a turnout here and over here which one could argue it's not part of the cement plant it's part of the old infrastructure for the station that used to exist here um, so I might put in a small uh, ground level or a, um, a uh, platform signal box um, just to support that little bit right there um, and uh, as for these other areas here, have a more ground throw uh, based um, levers for the guys. So again, that'll be extra infrastructure to paint as well. Okay, there we go guys. And then, um, and then of course the other thing is start the scenic foundation. So what I mean by that is I'm going to, I've got an awful lot of polystyrene there. If I just pan the camera down here, this is all the uh, ex you know, extruded polystyrene um, from high density to uh, the stuff full of bubbles. Uh, makes a great mess, um, but uh, you know it's cheap, and in some cases I get it from nothing. Um, so I've got a fair whack of that that I'm going to sculpt and get into place. So all the scenic foundations utilising this, I do have more stored elsewhere in the plant in my place uh, because I've collected it from uh, you know like white goods or items that I've purchased that come with you know these big cubes of polystyrene uh, protecting it. So uh, save some of that as well. Um, so uh, that'll be the scenic foundations now unlike uh, a lot of other people that uh, then you know put plaster cloth or sculpt the mold over it and then um, you know paint it then put the scenic grass and stuff on top I'm doing things completely different <coughs> excuse me so what am I going to be doing differently well still doing my foundations getting a good foundation for my scenery to go on but once that's done then I'm putting something else over the top now that's going to be a little secret of mine I'm doing things completely different um, things will not be full of static grass, put it that way. Now, you might think, well, what the heck am I on about? Well, I'm going to do something different. I am a painter, and I plan to paint my grass. Now, you might think, that is hilarious. How do you paint grass? Um, well, we'll wait and see. As time goes on, so if we take a look at our uh, month right here, for example, um, when we take a look at, uh, say, November, as we start to have a look where I've got the scenic country area, um, or even September, you know, we scenic the cement plant, then you're going to start to see what I'm actually doing. Um, I've got a selection of items that I'm going to use to try and create my own grass. And, um, and while I'll be, be using static grass in my layout, um, I'm going to use it to create details separately. So it's, the static grass is going to support my other grass that I'm using. So, so stay tuned uh, if you're interested to see, okay, I'm doing something different here. What is it? Um, and we'll wait and see. Now the other thing that's uh, on is in August I've got uh, situated here, you know, finished laying all the track. Now that I may actually do in July, uh, sorry, in June, um, because one of the things I want to do is get all the track work in and ten, uh, test it extensively. Um, and more so, I mean, yeah, look, it's a very simple track plan um, in many regards, but when it comes to essentially my fiddle yard, so way over further here for example now it's a bit hard to see one of the things I want to do is as I get these extra sorry get my finger out of the way get these other lines here connected up and connected into my actual fiddle yard I want to test the footy yard every single line I don't want to do it you know a couple of months down the line and then find out I've got problems and I need to adjust things I'd rather do them now so as a result I may add my uh, extra track work for that and uh, get that up and running much more sooner um, We'll wait and see on how that actually uh, how that goes. And the other thing is also, it'd be nice to get a train running in the opposite direction <laughs> instead of them all going one way. Um, so yeah, so there we go, guys. So that's the update at this stage for the layout. Um, you know, I am starting to try and move to weekly updates or weekly videos with my channel. 
Um, so, uh, you know, if you're interested in uh, sticking around and checking it out, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and, uh, you know, keep me motivated, <laughs> you know, hold me to account. Um, but I think uh, the schedule on this is actually doing me quite well. It's um, keeping me in check and it's giving me great progress. I'm looking back at things going, hey, I have done this, I have done this, and I'm making progress. So, um, so at this stage, there we go, guys. So there we go. Thanks very much for uh, following me, guys, and uh, obviously my new subscribers again. Welcome aboard. Thanks for joining me, and um, you know we'll keep in touch, and I will see you in the next video coming up shortly. Take care. Bye for now.